Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to everyone. We are delighted you are here. No matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. A special welcome to our friends watching online. We are delighted that you have joined us too. No matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you too are welcome here. As we begin, we hope you will check in with us if you're online. Let us know you're worshiping with us. And if you have prayer requests, you may send those, and we will include those in the coming week. So again, we welcome everyone. Uh, we are delighted to have those of you who are here. And again, we have the opportunity to sing during the service. If you do so, please uh, keep your mask on so that those around you feel safe in participating in worship. And also, thank you again to those who've remembered your name tags so that our new friends can spot you without being able to see your whole face and your smile. And we hope you will uh, get a chance to wave or nod. And maybe at some point, we will also get a chance to make that welcome even more personal. I want to say a huge thank you to Becky Santiago and to her company, PBM Construction. They are the ones who donated to us the hand sanitizer and stand that is there at the entrance. And that was a, a good expense. So we appreciate that uh, contribution very much. We're going to begin our worship with our welcome song. And you are welcome to stay seated if you want and we will join our voices and our hearts together as uh, Sally will help us get started and then we'll join in together as she gets us going. Let us welcome one another. calls us to worship. The Christ of healing calls us to worship. The Christ of hope and love and the future calls us to worship. Let us worship God together. Will you join me in our invocation and the Lord's Prayer? Let us begin. O oh God, you are our help in every moment. Your presence is with us like every breath. We come to worship knowing that you are still working to create, bless, and bring hope to all people now and in all the years to come. Help us to be filled with gratitude for your blessings of the past and hope for the future as we ask it in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord, who taught us to pray our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Let us join our voices together in our first song, Our God, Our Hope. There are four verses, and we invite you to sing along. You may stay seated.
Our stewardship moment this morning is a reminder that we will begin our special offering for uh, the Safe Harbor Maritime Academy. I'm so used to calling them the boys' home and have a hard time switching. Safe Harbor is a safe harbor for teen young men who are at risk. It provides a safe harbor, a safe place, uh, residential, schooling, and guidance to help them get training to be successful in life and at a career. As those of you who participated in this remember, the dollars that you give will go to buy gift cards that we give to the boys at uh, Christmas time and it allows them to what often turns out to be a blessing to others because so often they tell us that they use that to give gifts to family and to others but it is for them to use as they choose and so we will receive this special offering over the next couple of weeks if you want to you can send in or turn in a check if you're online, you can certainly do that through our website. There is a donut, a donate button, a donate button there on the website. So we hope you will uh, take advantage of however you choose to be able to give. Those of you who continue to support our regular mission and ministries, we thank you. We feel a deep gratitude to you as we continue to send out thousands of dollars to help the mission partners that we work with here in this community and through our church's wider mission all over the world. Thank you for your giving, and I hope you will think about that and meditate on that as we listen now as uh, Sally shares operatory music with us. Thank you, Seth. Let me invite you, if you will, to join me in the spirit of prayer. Will you join your hearts and spirits with me? Let us pray. Oh God, we know that you are present. We believe in the promises you have made. We trust that in Christ we have discovered and witnessed your love. Help us when our hope falters. Strengthen us 
when our hearts fail us. Encourage us when we face evil and help us to be as forgiving as you are. Forgive us, O oh God, for so often our judgments are narrower than yours. Where you love, we are tempted to hate. Where you seek the blessing of all, we seek to limit it to ourselves. Forgive us. Grant us a wider vision. Remind us that in your reign, all are welcome. Lord Jesus, as we seek to be your disciples, your followers, help us to lead with love, with hope, with the promise of your presence to sustain us. When we falter, help us hear your voice. When our love is inadequate, let your love flood our hearts again. When our spirits are weak and weary, send your spirit. O oh, Holy Spirit, we hold up so many. We lift them up knowing that you hear and answer every prayer with love and grace. Hear us as we pray this morning for those who have lost loved ones, especially for Virginia's family, for Pastor Jacques' family. Hear us as we pray for the people of Haiti. Hear us as we pray too for Christy and her family. We pray for those who are struggling with COVID, and we pray for those who think it is nothing. We ask your healing to continue to be with Glenn's family and with Liz. We pray your healing with Sue and Dave. We thank you for your healing with Winston. And Bill, hear us as we lift up Ephraim and Darlene, Thomas, may your comfort be with Sharon and her family, with Chris, with Donna. with Dottie and Connie. We pray that you would watch over Eileen and baby Eleanor. And we remember Larry and Gretchen before you in prayer. Hear us as we pray for the boys and for the staff at Safe Harbor. Be with them and bless them. And hear us especially as we pray for our friends watching online. May their hearts be blessed as well. O oh, Holy Spirit, we give thanks that you hear all these prayers and we ask that you would hear us as in a moment or two of silence we offer our hearts to you now. Lord, in your mercy. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 
Our scripture lesson comes from the Gospel according to Matthew this morning. We're reading from the 20th chapter, the first 16 verses. It is one of the parables that Jesus tells as his disciples listen. Listen for the Spirit speaking as we read from Matthew 20, beginning in verse 1. Jesus says, For the kingdom of heaven is like a landowner who went out early in the morning to hire laborers for his vineyard. After agreeing with the laborers for the usual daily wage, he sent them into his vineyard. When he went out about nine o'clock, he saw others standing idle in the marketplace. And he said to them, You also go into the vineyard, and I will pay you whatever is right. So they went. When he went out again about noon, and about three o'clock, he did the same. And about five o'clock, he went out and found others standing around. And he said to them, Why are you standing here idle all day? They said to him, Because no one has hired us. He said to them, You also go into the vineyard. When evening came, the owner of the vineyard said to his manager, Call the laborers and give them their pay beginning with the last, and then going to the first. When those hired about five o'clock came, each of them received the full, usual, daily pay. Now, when the first came, they thought they would receive more, but each of them also received the usual daily wage. And when they received it, they grumbled against the landowner, saying, These last only work one hour, and you have made them equal to us, who have borne the burden of the day and the scorching heat. But he replied to one of them, Friend, I am doing you no wrong. Did you not agree with me? for the usual daily wage? Take what belongs to you and go. I choose to give to this last the same as I give to you. Am I not allowed to do what I choose with what belongs to me? Or are you envious because I am generous? So the last will be first, and the first will be last. Here ends the reading of this portion of God's holy word. May God bless us as we read it and hear it, as we seek to understand it, and as we strive to respond to it faithfully. Amen. Quitting time. Who doesn't love quitting time? Who doesn't remember Fred Flintstone? Yabba dabba doo! As the dinosaur whistle blows. Maybe you saw the Shawshank Redemption. There's a scene in which Andy, wrongly convicted of murder, is on the rooftop with all of the other workers repairing a roof, and he talks the meanest prison guard in New England into giving them all a beer when they finish the job. 
Ah, quitting time. Now, quitting time is one thing, but payday is another. Don't mess with a woman or a man's payday, right? Two different things. So there you are. You got into the daily labor pool before dawn, walked in the dark to the shop where they hired the laborers. You were hired and out in the fields before the sun broke the horizon. You worked all day. There are no facilities. There's no water jugs. You worked, and you worked, and you worked. You noticed that some more workers came along about mid-morning, again at noon, then at three, and just an hour or so before sunset and quitting time, a few more. And you know you're gonna get paid but this time, for some reason, the boss tells you to line up last first. So you see what everyone else is gonna get. And those lazy bums who only worked an hour, or maybe a couple of hours, why, boss man pays them the same coin and when you get there, you got the same lousy coin. No more for working all day. You grumble, but not too loudly. But the boss man hears, and he says, if I were to uh, translate the Greek for you, literally, is your eye evil because my eye is good? Are you jealous because I'm generous? Today we debate a lot of things. One thing that's not debatable is the minimum wage has not gone up significantly to keep up with inflation in 30 years. Many of those who work at that are not teenagers needing prom money. They are mothers with babies to feed. 76% of those who work at a minimum wage are not teens. They have to pay rent and utility and food. And they can't get a full-time job because then the boss man would have to pay health care and other benefits. Those people that wait on you in the restaurants, they've been paid less than $3 an hour for the last 30 years. With tips, most of them still have to have food stamps to even begin to get by. They're not lazy. The reality is that 71% of those living on that less than $3 an hour in tips are women, and most of them, many of them, have families to feed. In the same time, ruffle some feathers here, CEO pay over the last 40 years has gone up 700%. I guess some people are just worth 700% more than other people in some economies. In God's economy, the last shall be first and the first shall be last. And that doesn't make very many people happy unless you realize that you're last. And while we may want to think that we're first or deserve to be first, those first workers thought they deserved to be first too. Now, preacher, you're getting non-religious. You're talking about men. I didn't write the parable. The parable is about economics, not just money but about God's grace as well. And so, for those of us who are uncomfortable with non-spiritual things, let me get 
spiritually. God's grace, Jesus is reminding us, is much different from the payday and the quitting time version of most of the world's economies. The point isn't the minimum wage. The point is that we believe in a God who is a God of abundance or a God of scarcity. You see, if God is a God of scarcity and there's only so much to go around, then we have to grab and we have to hoard and we have to make sure we get ours before the other guy or gal gets hers. If it's a world of scarcity and God is not a God of abundance, then we should live by social Darwinism. Only the fittest survive. You have a disability? Tough. You didn't have the education that some got, the quality? Too bad. You didn't have the boots to pull yourself up by the straps? Your problem. If it's a world of scarcity. It's almost as if we believe the world is like that TV show that I hear is coming back. Weakest link. You're the weakest link. Goodbye. Who cares? Is grace earned? Is God's love only for the strong who survive? Are those who maybe don't understand that grace and are late to the game deserving of less love? Less of a welcome. That's part of what we all struggle with, both religiously as well as in other ways. If only the strong survive, maybe that's why Jesus was crucified. Or maybe not. Maybe we have to think again about our theology and discern where our theology is confused with our economic beliefs and understand that God is a God of abundance, that the God who was our help in ages past, our hope for years to come, and our help is a God of abundance, a God whose grace has no limits. And so God's provision has no limits. Yes, there are things that get between God's grace and us, but there is no limit to what God can and will do. We can struggle believing only that some deserve it if they believe a certain way or they act a certain way. But Jesus said, the last shall be purged. And so when we think about it, we may struggle with these words. We may want things to be more like we've always believed they ought to be, but somehow or another, I didn't get appointed God, and apparently neither did you. Jesus continually upsets our thinking. Jesus continually challenges us to open our hearts and our minds to a wider, more gracious, understanding of our world. Jesus challenges us to ask, who is it that I think is unworthy? And what do I need to be forgiven for so that I can remember that everyone gets God's grace, even if we don't think they earned it? So, I struggled with this because sometimes this can sound like something you don't want to hear or I don't want to hear. God is generous. Do I resent that? Yes, at times. I can remember when I was working in places and payday came and somebody had messed with what I thought I was supposed to get. I can remember being angry, wanting to argue with the boss man. Never got me anywhere except fired. So sometimes what it says to me is I need to think about what do I think I deserve? And then think about how much better I've been blessed. 
I think the challenge to our thinking and living is difficult in this day and time. Many of us have a hard time thinking differently than we've always thought. We've set our beliefs about many things in stone, and we've decided anybody who's not like us is wrong, or worse, they're evil. That they are the last in God's economy. But the truth is, is Jesus steps in and upsets our thinking again. Upsets my thinking. Maybe not yours. So as I struggled with this message, I thought about how do I bring this home? How do I get to quit in time in this sermon? My temptation was just to walk away and find some old sermon and re-preach it. But in doing that, I came across something by an artist I admire very much. Victor Wooten is a very talented jazz bass guitarist. But in addition to that, he is a songwriter. And he wrote some words to a song that I want to share with you as we close this morning. I'm going to read it because I want to get it right. Now I'm going to tell you a story, and this one you can repeat. I saw God the other day just walking down the street. He said, I have something I want to tell you, something I've been dying to say. You've been waiting for my return. The truth, I never went away. I said, hold on just a minute. How do I know it's really you? She gave me a simple answer. She said, you don't, unless you do. Wait a minute, I don't quite understand all this. Tell me what do you want with me? You see, I'm not a religious type of person. He said, you don't have to be. I don't know if I'm the right person to talk to. You know, a few of my puzzle pieces are missing. She said, I speak to everyone, but not everyone chooses to listen. Then tell me how to treat my enemies. I mean the people I despise. He said the answer will be clear to you when you see me in their eyes. I don't care if you believe me or not, I know who I saw, and it was God. I saw God the other day. She looked like me. He looked like you. Now that you've told me all this, can you tell me what I'm supposed to do? She said, you may think it's up to me, but it's really up to you. Now my eyes are open. And I can clearly see, I realize that all the things I paid for in life, I could have gotten free. Now I'm going to share her parting words to me with you. And you might want to think this through. She said, if I only had one son, then tell me, who are you? If you're a child of God, and I'm a child of God, and they are children of God, how shall I treat her, him, them? He said, the answer will be clear to you when you see me in their eyes. I think that's quitting time. Yabba dabba do. Amen. Will you join us as we turn to our closing song, All Hail the Power of Jesus' Name, and sing with us as you remain seated. Remember that after the benediction, when we 
celebrate with our hallelujah, we will, since we count on both hands, we'll sign that together. Tammy, will you demonstrate hallelujah once again for those of us who may not have seen it last week? It's Ale, Lou, and then your hands open for Ya. Clap, clap, swing, and up. Okay? Let's uh, sing All Hail the Power. this week on and forevermore. Amen and amen. 